Hey everyone, today on the final bar, we'll conduct our normal Monday routine for breaking down the markets. We'll start with the top down macro view. We'll look at sector rotation, identify what's working and what's not. And then we'll look at a lot of individual stock charts, focus a little bit on stock selection today. Market continuing higher, continuing this recovery rally with the S&P other indexes moving up very nicely. So we'll break down all of those themes today and more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final bar. Hey everyone, welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close to look at the markets through the technical lens, try to make sense of things. And in this environment, it's all about understanding the short-term supply and demand picture, the short-term investor psychology, but most importantly, how that relates to the long-term, right? Where, where this week, where this day fits into the big picture. And what we've seen, you know, talking on Friday, we had this nice rally into the close up to the upper end of that range on the S&P. And the question was, what sort of follow through do we get this week? And so far with the headlines over the weekend, sort of this feeling of a reopening of the economy, reopening of the country, market certainly was on offense mode today with a lot of the flows going to financials, going to REITs that are focused on, you know, more retail oriented uh, pursuits. It was the things that should do well if the, uh, if the world's going to recover a little more quickly than Others that uh, people had expected not too long ago. We're going to get to all those themes and more in just a moment. I did want to point out some of the great guests we have coming up on the final bar. So this week, starting tomorrow, we have Craig Johnson from Piper Sandler uh, in Minneapolis. On Wednesday, Todd Sohn from uh, Strategus in New York. And on Thursday, Greg Gunther is a, a fantastic analyst at uh, Agora Financial outside of Baltimore, Maryland. So some really good experts, and we've had some fantastic guests the last couple of weeks. I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, check out some of the previous episodes, because some great perspective from, uh, you know, from some of the top experts just trying to make sense of what we're all seeing. Earlier today, we had our latest uh, uh, episode of Behind the Charts. That's our interview style show. We sat down with Todd Gordon, uh, who's a fantastic educator, trader, uh, and uh, did a great job explaining how charts fit into his process. And then I also wanted to point out, coming up on May 13th, just a couple weeks out, we have our next episode of The Pitch. That's one of our newest shows, which is a discussion with a couple uh, top experts providing their picks, their top ideas for right now. It's going to be moderated by Grayson Rose from Stock Charts. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, so tune in for that on May 13th. So let's get right to our market recap. As I mentioned uh, in the introductory comments, you know, on Friday, we did our wrap the week segment and, you know, the S&P finished really accelerated in the afternoon. After lunch, it was sort of a step on the gas, finishing toward the highs of the day. And the question I posed was, you know, coming through in the next week, starting on Monday, do we get a follow through? It's all about the confirmation. It's all about that validation on the next trading day. And I think there's no way you could say it's anything but that today. I think we had the upside follow through um, <clears throat> that, that I'd mentioned uh, before that I that speculated that we would need to see. Um, and today was interesting, right? It was all about the, uh, you know, stocks that would do well given a, uh, a quicker pace to a recovery, uh, um, you know, the, the open questions about when, how the economy is going to reopen, how our communities are going to quote unquote get back to normal. And this was definitely a vote of confidence that that's going to happen sooner rather than later. I guess it will be a less difficult uh, transition than uh, many have speculated on. So, you know, again, I, as with all of you, I'm trying to figure out what this means for my family, for us personally. But when you're looking at the charts, it's all about the expectations and what are reflected there. And again, I think it's reflecting some further upside. Let's talk about what moved today. We'll look at a chart of the S&P. We'll get to some of the other themes. And then, as I mentioned, we'll get to sectors and stocks in a minute. So the S&P finishing up about one and a half percent, just under 2880s, closing around 2878.50. Um, mid caps up more than that, small caps up even more. So mid caps and small caps act up, up at over 4%. So while the S&P was up 1.5%, small caps and mid caps really accelerated to the upside. They had a fantastic day right out of the open. That's sort of a, you know, again, a vote of confidence of the smaller, uh, you know, higher beta companies being able to uh, to recover a little uh, little more quickly. 
This rally today has now pushed the VIX to a pretty low level relative to where it had been. It had been in the 80 range, and now it's down below half that, down another 8% to uh, just around 33. So when you think about the VIX, again, this has been incredibly elevated, mirroring previous bear market cycles. Now, just as quickly, you've had sort of a, you know, a, a V bottom of sorts, a V top, really, if you think about the VIX, um, you know, going up in, in bear market phases, really uh, flipping over very, very quickly. In terms of other markets, uh, bonds suffering today, bonds coming off, so sort of a rotation away from the safe haven of government debt and into more speculative pursuits. The TLT down almost 2% today. That's pu pushing 10-year yields higher, around 66 basis points. Within commodities, yet another huge down day for oil. So it's inter interesting to see how well equities recovered, even with oil continuing its you know, relentless downtrend. Uh, and even the energy sector did kind of fine, up over about, about 2% on a day when energy was, or when oil was down so significantly. Uh, gold down as well, and gold has been one of the better charts out there, really improved in, uh, to close toward the highs of the day, but still below Friday's close and commodities as a whole coming off uh, today. Let's look at a chart of the S&P 500 and we'll pick out some of the other themes. So, you know, the question for a while has been, where does a bear market rally end? And again, I don't know the answer as, as no one else does. All I can do is look at the charts, look at the trends, try to try to get some color from it. So when we broke down through this trend line support and so many stocks did, it felt like that might be the beginning of this new leg down that has not materialized. Thursday, Friday, we sort of chopped around. And then today, we've, well, we've rallied to a new closing high for this bear market rally, getting above the 50% uh, retracement level going from the 2018 to 2020 low. We're well above the 50% retracement of the February to March sell-off. And now we're approaching the next key level based on Fibonacci retracements would be a 61.8% retracement. That's around 29, uh, 2936, 2950. And, and, and I have to say, I guess that's the next uh, upside objective you'd be, uh, you'd be looking to. Again, I'm very surprised by the severity of the uptrend and the uh, staying power of this uptrend. The RSI is nearing 60, has not broached it yet. And again, in bear market phases, that's where things tend to top. So we'll have to see again how this, uh, how things materialize. But especially when we get to the sectors and then the stocks, you're going to find a lot of the charts just becoming more and more supportive of an extended uh, uptrend. No signs of, uh, of an alleviation of that. We're going to get to the longer term sector charts in a minute, but I did just want to point out today to recap what's going on. We had financials uh, up three and a half percent, the number one sector followed by real estate. And there are a lot of REITs with, you know, uh, you know, baked in an expectation of, uh, of, of how, you know, physical locations are going to reopen. And, and you saw the, the retailers up huge today, like JW Nordstrom, Macy's, those sorts of uh, uh, department store types of names up big today. Um, and so the REITs that are related to those certainly up as well. Interesting to note on the bottom, you have consumer staples, the lowest sector, which makes sense because, um, you know, a lot of those names had been so elevated based on an expectation of a continued um, social distancing, continued uh, quarantine phase, if you will. And if that's alleviating, those stocks are going to suffer a little bit. Still up, but up a lot less than the overall market. Communication services second from the bottom and technology number three. And it's more and more looking like some of those big cap tech names really been a safe haven. And if things are going to get better, we're rotating into other things that are potentially going to recover a little, uh, a little more quickly. I guess that's the expectation we would be, uh, we would be looking for there. I want to finish off our market recap just looking at a couple breath measures here. So the cumulative advanced decline lines, again, have not made a new swing high. So while the S&P making a new closing high for this, uh, for this bear market rally, the cumulative advanced decline lines, not yet. Well, this is not updated through today, so we'll have to see if it's able to eclipse those. I, I think it might based on what I'm seeing and the, and the, uh, the breadth that we saw on the, uh, on the upside. I did want to point out one more thing before we rotate on. I think I'm on the wrong chart list. So sorry. We're going to go to the breadth chart list, which is this one. There we go. And we come down here. Percent advances decliner. So I wanted to just see, yeah, it's about an 80% update, 78% of, uh, of NYSE stocks higher today, 20%. Uh, lower just a couple percent uh, uh, sort of uh, unchanged. So it wasn't a 90% update. It wasn't a full capitulation to the upside, which is what you saw on these, you know, big breakout days where there are huge numbers. Almost everything is higher. We didn't quite get there. Uh, and again, that usually signifies an extreme bullish momentum when you can get um, all of those a breadth thrust. And we did not get that uh, here today. But again, overall, the average stock certainly closing higher than lower. 
That's our market recap for today. Let's move right on to our sector setups. And again, the goal here every Monday is to break down sector rotation uh, to look at how things are moving. We always start with the relative rotation graph. Uh, and again, if you're not familiar with this visualization, it's a great way to visualize the 11 sectors rotating around uh, the benchmark, the S&P 500 in the middle. Julius de Kempner, my colleague uh, here at Stock Charts, has a show, Sector Spotlight, which is really well done. If you're unfamiliar with this methodology, watch some of his work and you'll get familiar with it very quickly. What's been interesting to me is sort of this rotation away from technology and, and the way things sort of traded today, it sort of certainly feels like we're getting a continuation of this trend where tech has been, the, that's been the place to be, right? For so long on a relative basis, just been a consistent outperformer. The relative strength has waned a little bit. It hasn't really been a, a huge underperformer, but more of a market performer for the last uh, month or so. You can see that the on the RRG graph, it's actually rotating from the leading quadrant down to the weakening quadrant. It's not quite there. It's sort of right on the border, but still technically in the leading quadrant, but it's heading southwest, which is the direction of, of inherent weakness uh, using this methodology. Things going northeast are the things really moving in the position of strength, and healthcare has now eclipsed technology as the strongest sector according to the RRG uh, visualization. What's interesting is consumer staples has been number two, um, and still in a pretty good place, but now starting to roll down a little bit. And that's with a lot of these staples names that have been um, so strong, uh, now starting to roll over a little bit. And again, not breaking down dramatically, but just, you know, some of these other uh, sectors like consumer discretionary really emerging in a, in a much stronger uh, position, relatively speaking. In terms of the avoids, energy, financial, industrials have been consistent in the lower left uh, quadrant. And again, financials moving up pretty nicely today, but it'll take a lot more than that for the sector to uh, to turn more positive on this on this relative rotation work. Also worth noting that communication service is sort of a non-factor. It's sort of right near that benchmark. And you know, talking with Julius de Kempner for a number of years now, you know, closer to the middle essentially means there's less opportunity there. Communication services is a really interesting sector. And again, it's still it's only a couple of years old, and I I still think people are trying to figure out how to make sense of this. This so, is so the old telecom sector, AT and T and Verizon. Uh, but it's also media companies like Disney. Um, it's a it's a mishmash of things. Internet retail stocks are in there, so it's sort of like a mix of a mixed bag of of, uh, of types of stocks. Um, but uh, however, as a sector, you know, so if you think of sector allocation, there really hasn't been a lot of opportunity there, just because it's been essentially a a benchmark play. You're you're fine just owning the S and P, for example, than trying to make a bet on communication services as opposed to healthcare or technology or something that's a little. Uh, further from the benchmark. Let's look at some of these sector charts and just try to, you know, survey the landscape. When we've talked in the last couple of weeks, it's all been about, you know, for a while there, all of 11 sectors look really challenged and utilities and real estate had looked the best out of all of them. Now that's changed a lot. And if you look at which sectors are above their 200 day moving averages, not many, it's actually only two right now. You have healthcare here in the upper right, and you have technology in the far left side. Both of those sectors, I think, are really key moments. We're gonna look at those in a second. We're also then gonna look at consumer discretionary, consumer staples, because the XLY and the XLP, that's a common ratio we look at. We're gonna look at that ratio and then look at the two sectors individually and see what they're, what they're telling us. So we're gonna start with technology, actually, which is in, on the left side here. So tech has been such a consistent outperform, and I've mentioned uh, on a number of the videos on the show, it's sort of that, uh, it feels like a core holding, right? It feels like that kind of thing you could build a portfolio around because relative strength is just consistently positive. And that's even during bull phases, during bear phases, you know, the run up at the end of 2020, beginning of 2000, I'm sorry, end of 2019, beginning of 2020, you saw it accelerate, outperform. As the market sold off, a lot of uh, flows into those big cap tech names, which served as great defense as they went through new relative highs. But if look at what's happened in the last month, from late March to late April now, you can see that the relative strength has not made a new relative high since the market bottom there, the third week in March. Since then, it's been flat, if not just a little bit down. I'd say overall, it's sort of a sideways, choppy uh, relative, which means it's sort of been a market performer, right? Other things like healthcare have recovered more quickly. Biotechs come to mind as a group in, within there that have recovered more quickly. And you have things that have recovered a little uh, less quickly, um, things like maybe utilities, right, uh, that, have, that, have, that have struggled a little bit on a relative basis. Technology is sort of in a market performer. What's key right now is it's back above its 200-day moving average, back above its 50-day. Only one other sector can say that same thing. So it's in a small group of, uh, of sectors that have been uh, pretty resilient to, uh, to get above those 
long-term barometers. The question right now on the XLK, can it get above 90 and hold that? Um, the breakdown that we saw about a week ago and you know, looked certainly like the beginning of the next leg down. We did not get any sort of confirmation. It turned right back up. And again, on the short-term time frame, the trend is positive. Higher highs, higher lows. If we make a new high here, you like, wait for the next pullback, see if it's able to continue that pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Now we compare that to what we saw with uh, healthcare. Healthcare is one of the, maybe the only sector that it's returned to its pre uh, sell off high. So it's back up to the peak from January. A lot of sectors peaked in February. Uh, healthcare actually peaked in uh, mid January. You can see that the XLV has now returned back to this key point. So you'd wanna see the XLV get above 105 and, and confirm that. That would get it above its, uh, its high from January of 2020. You can see how the relative strength, while technology has struggled to outperform, healthcare has embraced its role as the market leader. This is the juice now. And, and again, you'd want to see biotechs, pharma, medical supplies, those groups that have done well continue to outperform. You'd want to see the XLV break above 105. That, in my opinion, would be the signal that you'd have to reconsider. Is this a bear market rally or just a rally? Have we recovered? And now, you know, we're just going to continue these things higher. And, and, and again, I'm surprised at how quickly it's happened. But my job isn't to, uh, to express emotion, it's to follow the charts, it's certainly what I'm seeing. I just wanna finish off looking at consumer discretionary, which has done well, making a new relative high for the last six months. You can see it's back above uh, the zero line. If we look at the last uh, six months, the last two years, we're back in the positive. But again, a new relative uh, high, breaking above uh, that first initial rally where it outperformed so well. Compare that chart right there to the chart of consumer staples, the XLP, and you can see the complete difference in the relative strength. The XLY breaking to new relative highs, the XLP breaking to new relative lows, breaking below the low point that it had right around the market bottom third week in March. That's what's making this ratio here as we flip down just a little bit. This ratio of consumer discretionary versus consumer staples, you can see how this is now broken above on a cap weighted basis, also on an equal weighted basis. So now this is showing you how we're really seeing people rotate more toward the offense than the defensive side of consumer. That has not happened for a long time. Really the entire uh, year 2020, we haven't seen that relative strength turn higher. That's what we're seeing. So it's telling you that on the uptrend in uh, consumer discretionary versus the uh, relative strength downtrend within consumer staples. We need to take a quick commercial break. Be back with my next segment, Shifting Stocks. We'll see you in a minute. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. Thanks for joining us every weekday and we are here to answer your questions. I wanna remind you, part of the show is very interactive and twice a week we answer questions from the final bar mailbag. It can be a question about technical analysis, about sentiment, breadth, specific charts, the, the market as a whole, whatever it is, we're uh, happy to do our best to answer those questions. The final bar at StockCharts.com is our email. Send any, any question you have. Also, you can hit us up on uh, Twitter, at Final Bar SCTV is the best way to get uh, your questions. Just tag us in a, in a comment and we'll uh, review those as well. Our next segment is shifting stocks. Um, you know, as I've mentioned to you a number of times, part of my weekend routine is going through the S&P 500 one by one by sector and try to identify key themes, key patterns, stocks at key junctures. And this segment always goes so much more quickly than I wish it did because I love going through these individual uh, charts with you. So I'm going to try to get through as many as I can. We're going to start with some stocks within communication services. I'll try to go through just a couple of sectors, see how far we can get uh, alphabetically through the, uh, the sectors, but some really key, key moments in here. And the one maybe first theme I want to highlight to you is the FANG stocks really not doing overall particularly well at the moment. And it depends. There's sort of the haves and the have-nots. Uh, we're going to look at Facebook, at Google here in a second. These are stocks that are testing their 200-day moving averages. Compare that to something like Netflix, which is in a much different place, really has been leadership, sort of a, you know, it's been a coronavirus play of sorts, right? People sort of uh, locked in, looking at, you know, watching, uh, catching up on streaming media. Um, so we'll, let's look at some of these charts individually, but keep these in mind. So Facebook's the first one we're going to look at. What's interesting here is on a day when most stocks were actually uh, up, the market up one to 2% at times. 
Uh, Facebook actually down one and a third percent, um, trading above its 200 day moving average, but closing back below. It didn't quite get a bearish uh, candle pattern. This would be a, um, a dark cloud cover where you close within 50 percent. Didn't quite get there as I'm as I'm looking at it, but pretty close. And certainly in the short term, you get the idea that we're trading above the 200 day for the first time since late February, but not able to finish above there. The RSI right at 60. And so the short term read suggests a little more weakness than strength. And I'd love to see uh, if that's going to follow through, if that ends up being some sort of uh, topping moment for, uh, for Facebook. Uh, Alphabet, similar sort of pattern. You close below the open. Both of these stocks, you know, opened higher, even open to a new swing high, but then closed back in the middle of this range. Has not been able to get above its 200 day. It reached it about two weeks ago. And every, every day almost has been trying to get above it, has traded above it, but not able to close above this key long-term barometer. So again, you, you, if you feel confident for a more substantial recovery from here, you'd need to see Alphabet, you need to see Facebook accomplish those 200-day moving averages and hold them. We haven't seen it yet. So within communication services, those are a couple charts. The third one I would point out would be Disney. Um, and this is one that, again, it's, it's interesting to see how well uh, this uh, stock has done. Uh, and again, we, you have all the issues with theme parks, all the questions, and, and it's really sold off through mid-March, but has recovered pretty well on a relative basis, though, still very much underperforming. What I like about this chart is you have a pretty clear risk reward. So we're up against resistance around 108, and we're right at the 50-day moving average that we're testing. We're below two downward sloping moving averages, which is not my favorite, but we're right above a key round number of 100, and that's been support a number of times over the last couple of weeks. So from a risk reward perspective, you've got a pretty good downside risk measure right there at the 100 level. It might be interesting to take a, a nibble and see uh, if you could ride that further. But again, the relative strength has not been as substantial because other groups have done, uh, have done so much better. Pivoting here to consumer discretionary, you had a lot of these uh, sort of traditional retailers. This is JW Nordstrom within the apparel, apparel retailers industry. And, and a lot of these up big today. Uh, so Nordstrom's up uh, almost 14%. It was up a little more than that, came off a little bit uh, to close just above $20 a share. In this case, 22 is a key level. Now, this is up from, what, 13, 12 and change or something like that. So it's already up huge off of the lows first week in April. But now we have a pretty significant resistance level. And if and when it's able to break above 22, I'd feel a little better about the long-term trend. But again, all of those stocks up really big uh, today. Now, obviously, within uh, consumer discretionary, you have to look at Amazon. What's interesting is Amazon actually finished the day with a bearish engulfing pattern. This is when, in an uptrend, you have a gap higher, a higher open, a close below the previous day's uh, real body. And that, more often than not, suggests short-term weakness. You combine that with a lower RSI coming out of the overbought region. It certainly feels like Amazon looking a little heavy for the... Uh, for the short term for the next couple bars. A, P, a high around 24.50, a break above that would invalidate that. But I thought it was interesting to note a little bit of weakness on that chart of Amazon after looking pretty good when I was reading it uh, this weekend. Now within uh, consumer discretionary, you also have the broadline retailers like Target. Target's back above its 200 day moving average. You'd wanna see if it can hold this. Uh, and again, as we mentioned with Facebook and Google not being able to do that, i will be interesting to see if Target is able to uh, to hold that. Now, also within consumer discretionary, you have a lot of names that are starting to break above their swing highs. Whirlpool uh, came out uh, as I was looking at these charts as this great pennant pattern, the nice uptrend, the sort of consolidation right around $100 a share. We've now broken above the upper end of that pattern above the 50-day looks good for further upside in the short term. You also have a LEG, which is Legged and Platt. This is also broken above previous resistance broke, breaking above the 50 day. Again, what concerns me about stocks like this, the RSI right around 60 and a lot of times in a bearish phase, that's where things start to peter out. So it's right at that point, it's right at that decision point where I'd wanna watch it and see uh, if it's able to uh, continue, confirm this breakout or whether that's it. Also interesting to know within consumer discretion, one of the reasons why the sector's done so well on a relative basis, you have stocks like DG, which are above. I mean, talk about a big base breakout. It was a six month base that it set um, starting October, the other peak in February and March, we had the market sell off. It recovered that very quickly um, through the first week in, uh, in April, now breaking out and uh, pulling back a little bit, but overall really in a position of strength and, and trading higher today. Now, I think consumer staples, uh, so also we, we've talked about the relative underperformance of staples. Charts like Hormel are what are making the relative strength suffer. So this is going to a new relative low for the last 
uh, for the last month or so, breaking below its previous support, still above its 50-day moving average, but again, this is selling off at a time when uh, the rest of the market holding up uh, pretty well, breaking to new highs. Hershey's another one that's actually tested moving averages from below, failed, and now breaking uh, further down, the relative strength really struggling uh, there. Now you compare that within consumer staples, you also have something like Kraft Heinz, KHC, which is, which is uh, holding up actually very nicely, making new relative highs for the last six months plus, breaking above its 200-day moving average and continuing higher, continuing this pattern of higher highs, higher lows. I'd be much happier opening, owning that type of name than I would uh, the two previous ones, Hormel and uh, Hershey's. So many charts to look at. We're going to skip energy and we're going to go to uh, financials. So what concerns me with financials, right, you have stocks like uh, Ben uh, Franklin Resources. And while these aren't horrible, they appear to be stabilizing and 15 is really the ultimate support uh, for, the, for this chart this is where it sold off in March. But most stocks have recovered dramatically and are up, you know, testing previous highs or testing the moving averages. Stocks like Ben, even though they're up today, you know, five, six percent, still so far underperforming everything else. So within financials, you got some real uh, long-term uh, struggling charts. Uh, Wells Fargo is another one, WFC. Again, the risk reward might be attractive. And if you're more of a bottom fisher, could be interesting because you've got a really limited uh, downside to previous support. You've got plenty of upside if things start to recover from here. Up nicely today out of the lows. But again, I'd much rather own stocks that are outperforming than underperforming just in general. So you compare that to something like State Street STT. This is something where the relative strength is a little more stable. You're seeing higher lows. You're seeing it break above the 50-day. I'd want to see that break above the 200-day, and I'd feel a lot uh, happier about that. Also, t -Row would be the other one, right? Sort of similar group. This one's a little earlier on, has not quite broken above its previous swing highs, but just starting to think about it again. With most financial stocks, the relative strength picture is still so questionable relative to other groups, I'd, I'd avoid uh, doing them too much. Finally, I talked about biotechs on, on Friday, so I don't want to re-imagine uh, that whole thing, but I just wanted to point out that you have stocks like uh, Lexion, ALXN, uh, in really good places, breaking above the 200-day moving average. Not many stocks back above the 200-day overbought, relative strength high for the last six months. Pretty decent chart that I'd be very happy with. And also, you have Amazon in the same group in biotech, testing new highs, right? So the peak from uh, December, just above 240, 245. And if you can see it continue above there, I think that means very good things for uh, biotechs, means uh, good things for healthcare, and then could mean uh, good things for the overall market as a whole. That's our segment, Shifting Stocks. And again, that was a tear through, boy, probably 20 charts there in, uh, in six or seven minutes. So apologies for that, but hopefully some ideas. And again, I hope that's the beginning of your process and spurs you to look at some of these stocks and groups for a little a little more technical uh, uh, um, process. We need to wrap the show, go right to the three and three, three charts in three minutes. These are gonna be three charts we just looked at, but if you, if you wanna remember three to pay attention to, I think this is it. So at a time when um, things feel much better and today was sort of a market, the market giving a vote of confidence to a more quick, maybe more seamless, less painful recovery, reopening of the, of the country and of the world, I think it's worth pointing out that some of the FANG stocks that have been the safe havens, those big mega cap names, not doing as well. So Facebook down on an update in the market, not giving you a bearish candle pattern, but failing at the 200 day. Again, you'd want to see something like this recover. Chart number two, Amazon with a bearish engulfing pattern out of all the charts we looked at. That's one that concerns me because it's coming out of the overbought region. This is kind of what happened uh, back here in February when it rolled over. Uh, and again, short term, that, that pattern usually suggests short term weakness. So it might suggest further weakness. People, uh, you know, not having as much of an Amazon appetite uh, for the coming weeks, coming months is what that may indicate. Netflix also, again, it's not a horrible chart, but it's down on an up day. And so you're getting some of these big defensive mega cap stocks where people have certainly been parking and you're seeing flows away from those into other sectors. And if that trend continues, whether or not that tells you something about the broader market environment, it certainly tells you some changing characteristics within the equity landscape. And folks, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Mondays are one of my favorites because we get to hit the market from a number of different directions. I hope this was helpful. Please send your questions on anything we talked about to the final bar at stockcharts.com. For StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a great night. 
Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.